assalamu alaikum today we are going to study gross anatomy of the liver liver is an important vista when it comes to the git and it is a frequently asked questions in the professional examination and as, as well as it is important in your clinical orientation so this is liver liver is an you can see here it is reddish brown in color and it is a large solid gland it is situated as i already told you it is situated in the right hypochondrium mainly it is situated in the right hypochondrium mainly but it also goes all the way to the epigastrium and left hypochondrium for that you can see here in the diagram you can see here so this is right hypochondrium this is epigastrium and this is left hypochondrium so liver is starting in the right hypochondrium and mainly it is lying in the right hypochondrium but part of the lobe is going into the epigastrium and tip is going into the left hypochondrium so you should know that it is reddish brown in color and its weight is almost 1600 g in males and 1300 g in females so its weight is lesser in females but higher in the males okay now after the location that it lies uh, mainly in the right hypochondrium and epigastrium and then in the left hypochondrium you should know that it secretes what is the function of the liver it is it secretes bile and that bile is important for the metabolism of the food for the external features you can see here it has two lobes this is the right lobe and this is the left lobe right lobe is lying in the right hypochondrium while left lobe is going towards the epigastrium and left hypochondrium <clears throat> it has five surfaces you can see this is the anterior surface which i am showing to you then anterior surface after the anterior surface you can see this is the superior surface while this is the posterior surface and then comes the inferior surface this is the inferior surface so you have superior surface anterior surface posterior surface and inferior surface and one has the right surface this hole is the right surface and this is the right lobe of the liver so this is the right surface of the liver so you got the five surfaces while for the border you should know that it has one prominent border that is known as the inferior border this hole is the prominent inferior border this is prominent because it is separating the anterior surface of the liver from the posterior surface okay anterior surface from the inferior surface of the liver this is the inferior inferior surface so anterior and inferior surfaces are separated by this inferior border of the liver and this inferior border is marked by two notches one is known as the interlobar notch and one is cystic notch cystic notch which i am going to tell you later first of all we are going to study the ligaments of the liver and after that all other gross features of liver so on the anterior surface you can see there is a ligament which is separating the right lobe and the left lobe that ligament is known as the falciform ligament so this ligament is falciform ligament which is going above and becomes the coronary coronary ligaments these are the anterior coronary ligaments division while if you go posteriorly these are the posterior divisions of the coronary ligament these ligaments divisions posterior and anterior coronary ligaments where they meet they form the triangular shape and that is known as the triangular ligament so anterior and posterior coronary ligaments forming the triangular ligament while in anterior this is the falciform ligament and that falciform ligament which is on the anterior surface when it comes to the inferior border so this is the prominent inferior border when it comes to the inferior border it becomes the ligamentum teres so you can see this white landmark this is the ligamentum teres so on posterior side from the inferior border it will start and it will it will go all to the posterior side and this is the ligamentum teres lying on the posterior and inferior surface of the liver and that that is the ligamentum teres so we have two ligament sorry so we have two ligament this is ligamentum venosum so we have two ligaments one is ligamentum teres falciform ligament crosses and here border becomes a ligamentum teres while on the or you can see here on the posterior surface this is 
on the posterior surface it is starting basically on the superior surface and coming on the posterior surface and this is the ligamentum venosum so ligamentum venosum also provides groove for the ductus venosus and this is the ligamentum teres so this is all the ligamentum venosum coming all the way down here to the gall bladder you can see here we have two lobes one is known as caudate lobe and one is quadrate lobe i always remember it that c becomes before the q so c is going to be the first one caudate lobe and then comes the quadrate lobe so you can see here that ligamentum ven uh, venosum and porta hepatis are separating these two lobes one is the caudate and other is the quadrate you can see that these both lobes are present in the right lobe of the liver not in the left lobe of the liver so we will discuss the right lobe first right lobe contributes right lobe contributes 5/6 of the liver while left left lobe only makes 1/6 of the liver so this 5/6 of the right lobe is 5/6 uh, part of the liver so right lobe is larger lobe than the le uh, left lobe and uh, on the anterior surface it is not providing any attachment but on the posterior surface you can see on the right lobe that it there are the caudate and the quadrate lobe so caudate lobe ki agar hum boundaries kare the caudate lobe you can see it uh, you can see here that caudate lobe has on the right side it ha it has the attachment of the ligamentum venosum and on the left so on the left by the so caudate lobe has left and right relation this is the left lobe of the liver and this is the right lobe of the liver so on the left side you can see caudate lobe has a left relation with the ligamentum venosum while on the right side this is the right side you can see it provides groove for the inferior vena cava this is the inferior vena cava so on the right side of the caudate lobe there is groove for inferior vena cava on the left side there is going to be ligamentum venosum while inferiorly caudate lobe is bounded by the porta hepatis this this groove is the porta hepatis porta hepatis contains hepatic artery portal vein and bile duct so inferiorly caudate lobe is bounded by the porta hepatis but if we talk about the quadrate lobe this is the quadrate lobe quadrate lobe is located on the inferior surface this is a posterior and this is the inferior surface so quadrate lobe is situated on the inferior surface and it is rectangular in shape you can see here it is rectangular in shape it is bounded anteriorly by the you can see it is bounded anteriorly by the inferior border while posteriorly it is bounded by the porta hepatis so in anteriorly inferior border and posteriorly porta hepatis while on the left side you can see it provide left side there is a groove for ligamentum teres while on the right side it is bounded by the impression of the gall bladder this is the gall bladder so on the right side gall bladder and on the left side it is going to be ligamentum teres anteriorly inferior border and posteriorly porta hepatis if you remember this model there is if there there is no difficulty in memorizing the topic of liver if you remember this model okay all the boundaries are shown here very clearly after that we talk about the porta hepatis so porta hepatis is it is a deep transverse fissure and it is about 5 cm long it is bounded by hepatic artery portal vein and bile duct so the things that are entering in the porta hepatis are going to be hepatic artery portal vein and hepatic plexus of the nerves while the things that leave the porta hepatis out of the porta hepatis that are the right and left hepatic duct ducts right and left left this is right and left hepatic ducts which leave the porta hepatis and again they form unite with the cystic duct and form the common bile duct which is producing the bile now if we talk about the left lobe of the liver this is the left lobe of the liver it is much smaller lobe than the right lobe and only forming the 1/6 of the liver it is flattened above downwards and in in if you can see here on the left side you can see this is the impression this is the gastric impression I, now we are going to talk about the impressions on the right lobe this first one impression is the this one this impression is for the renal impression after renal this is the colic impression while this is the duodenal impression so renal impression colic impression and duodenal impression and this bigger one is the 
gastric impression and on the superior surface this there is going to be a impression for the esophagus as left lobe is going into the left hypochondrium where stomach is lying so it is automatically providing the impression for the stomach that is known as the gastric impression if we talk about the peritoneal relations of the liver so liver is almost covered with the peritoneum but there are four places in the liver which are not covered by the peritoneum and examiners ask to you in the exam that which parts of the liver or, or which four parts of the liver are not covered by the peritoneum so here in model you can see this is the spongy form they they have shown this like spongy surface so this spongy surface is the bare area of the liver they have demarcated this part as in spongy part because they want to show you that this is the bare area of the liver and this part of the liver is not covered with the peritoneum you so you can see say that where the triangular ligaments meet that is a triangular area so triangular area it is a bare area of the liver and it is not covered with the peritoneum and also inferior vena cava also comes in this bare area part so groove for inferior vena cava is also not covered with the peritoneum and then fossa for the gall bladder this is the fossa for the gall bladder it is also not covered with the peritoneum and where the lesser omentum attaches with the liver that is known as hepatogastric ligament that will be on this side this is also not covered with the peritoneum so these are the four places in the liver which are devoid of the peritoneum